your connection to the mystical, to the divine, to God, is also your connection to your true self. So however you truly feel or think about yourself, however you truly treat yourself, determines your relationship or your connection to God. Because your true self might include some aspects that you do not like, that you do not, you do not agree with. And if you hate them, if you feel bad for yourself, if you start having self-pity and becoming resentful and all of that, that would also be your relationship to God. Because once you truly agree with and accept whoever you are, whatever you are, whatever life led you to become, because it's all connected. This is what life has drawn for you and it's the same energy that flows through God, through the infinite, through the divine. And if it has led you to that, but you hate it and you disagree with it and you sever the connection with it, then you're also severing the connection with God, with the spirit, with the infinite. But also if you accept it and if you come to an agreement with that aspect of yourself, it will no longer be a negative thing. It will no longer be a negative aspect. It will no longer be a hindrance or a blockage or an obstacle. It will no longer make you feel bad or worse about yourself. And if it's truly a blockage, it would dissolve after you had accepted it. But you first have to accept it because it's where life got in you. There was a reason for all that's happened. And if you continue to resist and reject, then you are not including this including this experience in your journey and you cannot move on further if you know what i mean and the reason your spiritual connection is the most important thing is because rather than being rather than living intuitively and effortlessly without your connection with your connection to your spiritual aspect severed you'd be living mechanistically and forcefully if that makes any sense. So you would live believing, knowing, feeling, thinking that you are creating everything with your own effort, with your own physical effort, that you have to figure out all of your problems, that you as an ego, simply a 3D physical being has to figure out everything and has to achieve forcefully everything they are trying to. And it would just be a mechanistic life rejecting the most important aspect to yourself rejecting a major aspect of yourself which helps you live and and make it through this life which is your spiritual nature which is your spiritual aspect and so you would be severing a major connection a major part of yourself when you do not maintain your spiritual connection with the divine and then you would be resisting and rejecting all of the creation energy all of this divine pure conscious energy and existence you would be rejecting it and things will not work out for you unless you truly struggle and suffer and sweat and cry your way through them rather than letting opening yourself to receiving that intuition that could help you on your path that or receiving that blessing that just make things work for you because the more you become connected to your true self the more you accept yourself the more you you connect to the spirit and then things work for you your problems get resolved faster your issues get resolved faster you achieve things faster because now you're no longer just a one-man force but you are receiving you are opening yourself to the collective energy to flow right through you and guide you so the formula is really simple is what I'm trying to say yet it's very elusive because your essence is one you can imagine it as if you have a center of energy and the more you feed the ego your ego aspect the more you 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 starve your spiritual aspect the more you the stronger you follow your ego's desires the less you're following, the less open you are to receiving your spiritual guidance to your desires. So the more you are stuck and, and set on to achieving whatever your ego is desiring in one way or another, the more you are saying 
the more you are vibrating on the fact that I don't need any guidance, that I'm not trying to receive it in any other way than the way I had planned for it. And that blocks so many other things, that blocks more ways, better ways that this thing could have turned out for you, easier ways, faster ways. And so the more you become your ego, in other words, the more you entertain your ego aspect, the more you sever your spiritual aspect. Now, the key here is not to completely have an ego death, is not to starve your ego. The key here is introducing the whole purpose of our coming in this existence, in this life, in this 3D dimension, in this 3D reality, is to include the ego, is to introduce the ego to your spiritual aspect and make the ego realize that it's safe, that it's complete, that it's whole, that it's everything that's been trying, bothering it, that the ego is afraid of, that it's all of those things. Even when it's spiritual, even when you let things go, even when you don't have to forcefully and struggle and, and beat yourself through things, beat your way and, you know, suffer your way through things. Now, that's not all. This is probably something that you've already known. And I know this because I set the intention for my videos to reach the people it's meant to help the most, to reach as many people as possible, that it would be of help to them. And so you probably already know this. You know that the more you you, you work on your ego, the more you, you live based on your ego and its desires, the more you are disconnected from your spiritual aspect. But what the real question is how? How do you know what is an ego desire and what is a spiritual one? What is a spiritual pursuit and what is an egoistic pursuit that's going to sever your spiritual pursuit or your spiritual connection, nature? And it's known now through measurements and through calculations and through the, the frequency, the, pyra the pyramid of frequencies and energies that mainly there are only two emotions. It's love and fear. And everything else comes from those things, from those two emotions. And the best way to portray, the best way to think about your ego's desires, your egoistic desires, how do you know if it's coming from an ego, from the ego, if it's an egoistic pursuit or it's an intuition or it's a spiritual one? So that you would listen to it, so that you would entertain it, so that you would perhaps even act upon it. Is that your ego's pursuits are always awakening fear and desperation versus love and fulfillment. The, anything that has to do with the ego is rooted in survival. It's based on survival. And the thing is, even if you receive an intuition, but you mess with it long enough, you could turn it into an egoistic pursuit and then it will not work as it was meant to work out just like if I'm, I'm i'm you know i felt called to make a video so you could have a calling you could have you could know that it's your purpose you've been called spiritually you've been led your entire life to this point but then i take this video i take those ideas i take this intuitive idea that i received i'm like let me add something else i know from the past let me elaborate on that let me you know go more in that different direction you know i stem from it and then i mess things up versus when i just say it as i received it say it as i felt it as i feel it rather than having to intellectually logic my way through things which could sometimes, which often actually mess that video up and it complicates things for me and, you know, it does not work as I wanted it to work out. So you could, but the ego, because then the ego, anything it becomes interested is only when it feels related to your survival. What I mean by survival is that it could be something that you've put so much worth on it that you feel low without it, that you feel less without it, that you feel like a failure without that thing or without having that thing right now. And then this triggers the ego's survival. That feels like you're lower, getting lower on the social hierarchy or the survival hierarchy. And now 
the ego is threatened. Now it's a survival pursuit. It's an egoistic pursuit. And now it's desperate because unless you have that thing, unless your life is that way, unless you're living in that place, unless you have that person, unless you're doing whatever, you're not complete. You will never feel complete unless you have gotten those things. And all of those things are egoistic pursuits. And the more focused you are on them, the more desperate you are for them, the more you are entertaining whatever your ego is making you feel or think to get there, the more you are entertaining this and you're acting upon this, the more you are rejecting your spiritual guidance, your divine guidance. And it will no longer be there, you know, even if you just come and, and, and after a very long per egoistic pursuit and you just come and you set yourself down and you go like, okay, I'm willing to open myself to receiving my godly intuition, my godly guidance. It will not be there. It will be very hard for you to, to receive it back and you have to go on some sort of a detox from the ego's pursuit. Get yourself to stillness because as long as you are fully controlled by the ego and its desires and its mechanist, me mechanisms, you will be coping and you will be you'll be suffering you'll be struggling and you will be you know you you will need to cope you feel as if you need to cope the whole day because you know it's it's too too much pressure on the ego it's too much for the ego it's overwhelming you because the ego is not designed to figure it all out by itself because partially mostly truly you are spiritual and if you are taking that aspect out of the equation you are no longer a whole person a whole being you are just you have split yourself and now you're working with just one aspect towards something and it overwhelms you and it completely leads you to self-sabotaging leads you to many other negative things and it works counterintuitively you know and that's why you remain stuck in it because it's counterintuitive it's not that easy and it's also elusive you will not be very aware if that's an ego thing or that's a spiritual thing or when does it get, become an ego thing. And that's why I'm telling you this. When it becomes that desperate, when it feels like a survival, when it feels like you, your life depends on it, your worth, your value, your completion, your wholeness depends on it. It's an ego. It, your spiritual guidance will never feel that way. It will come, and it will come with the surge in your with a surge in your energy that allows you to fulfill that calling. So it will not feel bad. It will not feel impossible. It will not feel like a struggle. It will not feel impossible. It will not drain you. But then, if you let it sit, and it will bring you calmness and stillness, and you will be still through it. Because you know that you're doing it, it will feel like you're doing it with guidance, with support of your confidence, of your true self. Because now you, you would feel connected to your true self and you know it, it feels like you are being supported and guided and it feels easy. But if you sit on it long enough and you're trying to change it, you're trying to play with it, you're thinking, well, maybe I can do it better, I can make it a better thing, I can feel it in a better way, I can think about it in a better way. And then that surge of energy would have been completed and exhausted through all of this new thoughts. And then when it comes time for you to present it or to start actually working on it, on it or acting upon it, you would have lost your surge of energy and then you would have tainted it with too much egoistic desires that it's no longer that spiritual aspect, that no longer that spiritual calling that's actually leading you to what you desire the most. And then you delay your journey even further. You delay solving your problems even further, even longer. And now it's no longer taking you there. But your spiritual pursuits will get you there faster, will get you there easier, and will gu and guarantees that you get there. But you just have to open yourself. And you have to set intention. You have to be very intentional with this because it's very hard. What the ego desires, the ego desires. What the ego wants, it will have unless you are intentional and conscious about whatever you're doing with your life, whatever you're choosing, whatever you're opting for. And that gives you back the power. But just the most important thing is that you go back inside. 
is that you connect with your true self is that you become familiar with who you truly are and all of your aspects everything that you've been avoiding everything that you've been running away from accept it and if it's there you will feel it and if it's an obstacle you will feel it and you will release it because releasing only happens after feeling feel to release empower yourself for life to empower you once you tune in to yourself and you realize that you are whole, you are complete, you are powerful regardless. You choose to be confident, you choose to accept it with an open heart because it has happened. It has become a part of you. And if it's meant to stay there, it will. If you have that initiative, you are, you will be empowering yourself and life will very much empower you back, will very much give you whatever you desire. It will lead you, it will guide you and your intuitions will guide you so fast to your dream reality with so much ease and with less with so much less problems thank you you lovely infinite beings for tuning in to another video by af's conscious frequency don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel because it helps me so much and it helps this video find its way to many more others who might actually need it just like it found its way to you